Cool. Like, like if you have a monkey king, it makes a lot of sense. The void spirit. You, don't, you can't right click oh, people. No, yeah, so I'm going 496 as well, simply just based on draft. That was lame. I have bunching for you. This uh, second game. It was 40k at a very very low timing for 496 in the first game so mm -hmm. second time around this feels like something that could be potentially a repeat yeah. I mean, a good thing though is it can't get much worse yeah like 40k in 29 minutes is a brutal beatdown and they'll definitely do better this game i'm very confident yeah and i mean they have some tools to work with i'm just afraid if it goes past that minute 25 minute 30 where's the damage gonna come from you know when his weave has BKB, a uh, <laughs> couple of items, when his uh, Bad Rider has blink BKB, even the Wind Ranger knows it's gonna go melt from BKB. Where's the damage coming from? It's all spells. The battle begins. Yeah, you know, we saw the safe lane IO yesterday, and then Raven, <laughs> who, who was playing that IO, you had Moon, who was on the Monkey King. That felt like a combination that you could get behind with yep. the IO and the Monkey King. But like you were saying, Let with the Void Spirit, it doesn't label play. Label play. feel as, I, I mean, I think my, me, I, I, it doesn't feel as confident Just as a, an I IO Monkey King. Nightmare. So do you think it's gonna be well, nearly as effective? It just doesn't seem that way, right? It just seems weird, honestly. As I said, maybe Midnight Stalker can make a little bit of sense because you can actually itemize into right-click damage, you know? Mm -hmm. But as a Void Spirit, you wanna go into like a Yules, and an Aghanims, and a Shivas Guard, Octarine Code, these kind of items. And they just don't add much to your right click power, honestly. Bottom is missing. So it's, yeah, it's just awkward. It's how's, an awkward combination. Uh, how's Bob supposed to do here up against Hun? They've moved uh, Hun here to play the Windrunner, go up against this Void Spirit. It's a pretty good Void Spirit lane. Um, pretty skill based as well, depends on how many uh, power shots you avoid. Mm. But generally, um, he has better last hitting, better last hit damage, as well as better spells to last it with. So, usually it goes into the Void Spirit's favor. And then, once you hit level 6, it just depends on who rotates better. And Henry is down bottom lane with this Night Stalker. And it's, it's going to be a different Night Stalker game, too. Like, we saw the activation of that Night Stalker very early on. First night. And then once that Nature's Prophet had the Orchid, but you have that Night Stalker getting the soul experience, getting the soul farm. Here he's not in the same situation. Probably not going to be as effective in that first night. And I think that leaves maybe things to be desired for Vice, right? Yep. And it's also not a very easy Night Stalker lane against the Bad Rider plus Earth Spirit. If you ever get like two or three stickies on you, in your position, you can die really easily. Oh, I missed the Remnant. He actually might have gotten the kill there because he doesn't have Wind Run at all. Or the Wind Ranger. Now 1 2 0 so far. Yeah, very aggressive build. But yeah, now the aggression is over. Both will have the bottle soon. Oh, are you actually being bottom? They're looking to uh, play some musical lanes. Yeah, at least that's what it looks like so far. This Night Circle just wants to get away from the bad You I should rethink that. It's a very rough lane. And also, Io against Weaver doesn't sound that fun. But then again, Night Stalker against Weaver doesn't sound that fun either. Or just Weaver, an unfun hero. And the, the thing too is like... Batrider can still make that move over towards top. It would be really bad if you lose the win. Just TPing down here. Tag team was used. Ren in a little trouble. He backs off this tusk. Let but will we see the Weaver and the Bat Changer? Is their matchup just fine enough for him to keep it attack? Their matchup is fine enough. I mean, Weaver would bully both of those heroes. Yeah. So he doesn't really have to change anything. And Bad Rider, I mean, you see Io can't really die to Bad Rider because he has his tether ability. Mm -hmm. But he'll still farm just fine. The choice. And then and, and still pressure the Io. Lane should be okay. It will just be, uh, be coming down to the Void Spirit only. Going for it again, and though. Use the snowball at the tag team first blood for Palos. Vice. They get themselves first blood, but at the same time, it also is over mid, and they get the kill on a Bob. What a bit of a similar situation in the first game where we saw you know, the, the fact that Bob was getting decent CS, but that didn't really translate into, you know, the proper mid game. Yep. And uh, there's one thing that we forgot to mention. Uh, 
Mantis. Ayo, Tuscan is actually incredibly strong. Tag team plus overcharge is mm -hmm. you have so much attack speed, so much damage. And you know, Fedra again, trouble, and yeah. Same thing. Back to back, and he yeah. probably just TP'd in there, so that means it's the walk of shame. This overcharge ability is just too good with, with tech team. Like, you, you actually, it's permanent slow because there's so much attack speed that you can't move at all. You have a snowball on top, you have ice shards on top if he doesn't have firefly. It's a very, very good combination. So, the Night Stalker actually just tp back to the tier 1 tower up towards top, he was getting harassed. Is that a moment now where you have maybe Batrider walk towards top, swap the lane, have Weaver go bottom? It is definitely worth a consideration now because he only has eight CS, two deaths already. Yeah. And a bad raider, you need to have some sort of game, you know. You're not like a super good catch-up hero because you can't farm the ancients anymore. Uh, a lane swap might be in order, yeah. Oh, but even then, it's nighttime soon. So you want to go to a night stalker at nighttime? Tough now, especially when you're behind yeah. at this point. Like Night Stalker is 19 and two. His lane has <laughs> been a little bit more of an easier situation after alleviating the pressure that was that Bat Rider. Yep. So you could just be walking into another bad situation. And it almost feels like Bat Rider. Bad his situation. Lane is, yeah, <laughs> he's having a bad situation, and his laning is uh, not looking good. Yeah, honestly, the, the first death already. He was he was just caught out of position. Mm -hmm. Uh, with half health, that shouldn't have happened. And the uh, second death is pretty, you know, unforgiving because you just TP'd back. Like, if you die again, TP has 80 seconds cooldown. You now have a walk of shame with HCS. I I'm not sure, honestly, where his impact is going to come from at this point. Because he's not supposed to lose bot lane this hard. Yeah, it's uh, definitely an issue. And you're having a good time for Vice. Yeah. It, just take something away from that first game for Vice. Their first seven, eight minutes was decent. It was good, it was good. It's just that once um, 4 and 6 started the aggression, yeah. Vice could not deal with it. But this game, I think they're probably going to be a bit more prepared for it mentally, as well as uh, strategically also. They have good heroes to fight back this time. They have uh, quite good counter initiation with the IO, relocate out, you know, a snowball, nighttime with the silence. They have a lot of good tools, for sure. And maybe we'll see Vice being the aggressors on this one. Mm -hmm. I think it will be because 496's uh, late game, I feel, is quite a bit better. So they can be comfortable with just, you know, letting them run at you and you just kind of respond. But again, it's not 496's style, you know, like they want to be the ones running at you. So either way, they will probably start running at you. Like this is just how this team plays. They don't pick any hard carries or anything. They definitely have the lineup to run at them, right? You've yep. got that long range initiation, that reach from the Earth Spirit, where he could just roll in, start with that, and then maybe you've got the Windrunner following that up with a Shackle, and then Weaver's there. Like, they could definitely pull that situation where it's 496, and we're just going to run at you the entire time and then jump down your throats and make sure that we slow down any progression that you're making. Yep. And again, Weaver's is one of the most aggressive carries. With spell Musukushi, he has a lot of potential, especially against this Io and Rubik. At the same time, though, he has to be very careful. He doesn't give the Sukushi away because a Ruby with a Rubik with that spell is incredibly potent for setting up ganks, just for team fight damage, survivability. It's just an amazing spell to steal on Rubik. So be careful to not give that away too easily. These Ags and Ag aren't around the board. The swarm on that Ag shard and the time lapse with the Ags. His, his shard worth is one getting? of the better ones because uh, Glimmer Cape doesn't help anymore mm -hmm. because it goes uh, through invisibility. So it's a pretty good anti support item as well as every person where the beetle is latched onto, you auto attack them once with Gemini attack. So it's a pretty good increase in DPS. And as I said, it counters a couple of support items. So if you're getting shard on Weaver, Obviously, that's a 1400 gold investment. Mm -hmm. Where are you getting that? Obviously, there is a point where you need to wait for 20 minutes, then you can get the shard. Mm -hmm. But what is that replacing? Because, like, say with a Wraith King who maybe is dealing with Mana Burn, he has to get that 1400 gold shard, and that's immediately 20 minutes. I need it. I'll get it. But for here, for this Weaver, is that as simple as that, or is he looking for one or two items before that? Earliest. 
like I would ever buy it is after Maelstrom BKB. Mm -hmm. But you need those two core items. Maelstrom, of course, you farm faster. BKB just so the Night Stalker doesn't run you down. Yeah. And after those two items, you could get it. But then again, there's probably better items to get. You know, you could upgrade to Glebnir. Or you could just go into a crystal, list. maybe even a Skadi if you Middle want that, or MKB, you know, there's lots of good choices. And the shard always, you know, it feels probably nice to have it, but 1400 is a, is a hefty investment. I think that's a lot of what people miss. They're like, oh, the shard is so broken. But you still have to make the investment. Yeah. And where you're putting that vi investment, how you're getting to that investment is a big part of a lot of these heroes. Can they even get to that point where it's like, I've got 1400 gold, do I sacrifice that to get my shard? Or am I in a position where I need something else? Yeah, I think the best shards are the ones that replace like core items. Mm -hmm. For example, on the Shaker, the shard basically allows you to not need a Blink Dagger. So that's like a really good investment because it's cheaper and it's somewhat of a replacement. But you know, like this more luxury shards, uh, it's hard to justify to get them. You see the chase here on a curve spirit is rolling out. <laughs> <laughs> Rolls out and then goes Got right it. back and around because they've got oh. home coming over. That shackle doesn't land, but the power shot is there. They'll take out the Rubik, they'll end up losing Hasla. But will they get on Ryu? Aether Remnant locks up Hung. He'll still put some aggression onto Bob. He's got the help from Bombi. Got the shackle. Oh, no. oh, there's the shackle power shot. They stood next to each other. It's always the one in the back. Always. But what was that? Bounty. They knew he had a shackle. Wind up right for it. <laughs> they were like, yo, I'm here, check for me. All right, I'll do that. <laughs> Wait, that was pretty silly, I don't know. Fight! And that really helps Hung's game out. It does. Like, he was not supposed to get that kill there. Wow. They had one kill on the Rubik, okay, fine. But the second one, nice, it was pretty unnecessary. Yeah, the plus one is where it really becomes uh, detrimental. So they'll bring the Night Soccer over on Ryu here with Bob and back in mid again. Tusk of Zanki. Ooh. Astro Snap, Snowball coming in. They've got three heroes here for this kill onto Hung. It's aggression over mid, and they really they needed to stop that Windrunner. You give them two kills like that, you need to get something back. Yeah, question is, or a nice rune snack. Radiant structures are fortified. But did they really need that Night Stalker? You know, he's level four, and it's mid lane. Dyer's structures kind of are fortified. Now. I'm not sure what he's doing, to be Dyer's honest. Middle but tower is under attack. I guess they just want to pressure the mid tower as much as they can. You know, like, you're giving up a lot of your Night Stalker. You had a pretty good game. You're not now going you're anywhere. Good right, Shackle. Yeah, Shackle and the roll. But now the one in trouble is the Earth Spirit. Hustle, he commits to this. He's got Haru here again. Who's looking to go onto the tower. Use that geomagnetic grip. He'll go into the dissimilate. Now they'll find themselves hung with the snowball. They bring over Palos. They've got the damage and the kill. Five heroes for Vice. Now who's the showing one? up and yeah, it's completely turned from the last attack. game. Bombi on the run. Three heroes going past the tier one tower. Should be able to get some damage on to Bombi. But the question is, do they get the Radiant kill? Radiant's oh, missing, splitting the seams of the entire side of Vice. But here comes Dap BB. Radiant's in trouble once again. They get the kill out of the Earth Spirit dead for like the second time this fight. Snowball onto Dap BB. And now their focus goes on to the Tusk. But he'll just TP away. They'll relocate the rest. That is a great exit from Vice. Very great exit. Very great rotations as well. Out there, the ones, you know, putting the aggression, uh, the aggression onto 496, actually. Very impressive. The way they rotated, the way they fought that fight. Of course, we could tell the bad rider is just way too poor to do anything. He's still level 5. If he was level 6, he could have probably done a lot more, you know, but being level 5, you saw him come in there at the end, he just yeah. couldn't do anything, just keep it out. Yeah, there's not much for him to do, and, uh... I, I thought maybe for a moment, that might be like a lot of commitment from Vice. Get five heroes there opening up the map, but once the Weaver and the Batrider come in and join it, they're not just farming, they're not just getting their experience, it feels like maybe, you know, the commitment's fine. Yeah, I mean, usually overcommitment is just bad if the enemy does not respond, you know? But if they also send more resources there, then it's usually pretty worth it. Looks like a pretty easy kill on the Wyver. Aether Remnant, Astral Stamp, Hung looking for the ult. He's not really doing that much damage though. Zanky is tough. Probably the one who ends up dead, but he's got the snowball back to the lane. So look for the roll. They've got the power shot. Finally, Zanky drops. And Hung at least gets something out of that. Yep. Meanwhile, you've got Wisp who's still farming. He's at about 4k. He's having a great time going into that Ags after the Helm of the Dominator. Always have that neutral with him. It's just, it's just so good, man. <laughs> 500 movements be permanent. Yeah, nice. 
And yeah, you can just see this Wind Ranger, her old actually just tickles people without that javelin. It's like, what, 10, 15, 20 damage per hit is really laughable. And I'm surprised you know, try to go for this javelin a bit earlier. But, uh, yeah, he will have it soon. Three on the gold, and he can start to make some moves for himself as well. Yeah, I think he had it cute, but then the aggression came and he died. Yeah. And it just put him so far back, because it would have been a good timing after that two, those two kills in the, in the river. And then they, they, they were like, well, we can't get him to this javelin. We have to aggress on him. And that's exactly what they did. Radiant's down. middle tower is no. under attack. Nicely put together by Vice. Yeah, they smoke. saw They're the trying to make something happen. They saw the smoke. So they're setting up very nicely on it for the high ground. Yeah, the tusk is there in a great spot to just put smoke. I think he didn't win. They're still going to go, though. They've got the silence on the Weaver. Can they get him out? No, the crippling fear is long enough. Radiant's middle it's night time. And Vice already will hustle getting low. It's not going to be enough in the cold embrace to save his life. Shackle comes through. Oh, Batrider here, they'll take the night fucker. They lose Bombi. The chase is on. He's under attack. Looking for red. Batrider, he should be okay as long as he doesn't step right back into these heroes on Vice. Still, though, three dead on the side of 496 and losing that Weaver is the big one. The yep. That's a. Has it relocate? I would have liked to see that relocate. That should help! The bounty rules, to be honest. Instead, he destroyed it with a full kill creep. Because honestly, that's one of the best things you can do when you're IO. Going in for the Batrider. He's going to get a solo kill? Yeah, Such tag thing. team with Walrus Punch. That's he gets it. All right. Easy. Power shot. Oh. Oh. That was not charged. If there was charged a little bit longer. I don't know if he had the time Dyer's right as that power shot came in. He was already attack. gone. Yeah, that was a super close one. But now, you see Vice is suddenly the team that just outplays 496. Yeah, yeah. One. There's a Winter Weapon again. One more Astral Stab. <laughs> They throw up the Winter's Ooh. Curse. They've got the control on the two. Yeah. Yeah. Getting them together. It's only on the Void Spirit. The right-click damage coming in, but he's not enough to get the Astral Stab away. He's the Bobby. Now they look over at Bob with the Relocate. Just in the nick of time. Hustle is over here. But I'm not sure he's going to be ready for that. Walrus Punch on that BB. Or for Zanki to have this Aether Remnant right on the Hustle. Goes to the Dissimulate. Looks for some distance between him and the side of 496. But continuing rolling his Hustle. That BB looking for something there. And they're just coming away with their hands in. Yep. Tag team, Astral Step, Hustle of Day, Dap BB, Mike would have two here. They've come into his hands with the Aether Remnant with the Dissimulate. Now the Shikuchi Power Shot misses, but he goes up the hill. He spots the Wisps. He says, yeah. Keep your life. Io is, uh, it's so scary to play against Io, honestly. You never know how much he's actually going to heal you. So take your distance, take your time, patience. But this bad rider is absolutely crippled. He's what, is, what is he going? Did he go for blink first? Pretty far behind. Oh, he went for travels. Okay. Hmm. Picking up travels when you're struggling this much. This would be a massive kill. Geomagnetic grip. They've got the silence. The snowball. So that's safe. And this is the counterplay. They've got the Void Spirit ready to go. They'll use that Walrus Punch on the Earth Spirit. They're still trying to get on the power. They use the Spirit. The Spirits. They get the kill. Winter's Curse. It's on the Night Stalker. They finally finish off Pals. They look over to the check. I'm not going to connect anything. But on the Walrus So they've got the two for two so far. The more they get the last of them. With that one, and now Radiant's the just 1k. Is under Bombi attack. God, Did you see the curse? He literally killed two everybody. people by himself, pretty much. Oh, he caught four heroes. This guy is legit. Like, he's yeah. gonna get picked up. If they don't make it big, he's gonna get picked up by some really big teams. 496, they look like one of those teams that's a dark horse. So let's take a look at that. Radiant's that handiwork once tower. again. Under Bombi attack. was ready for it, and, it, and look, it, it looked like a moment where. Maybe Vice can take advantage of this. They got the snowball, they're going aggressive. It did save the life of the Wisp. Maybe they didn't want, didn't want Palos there. But look as they start to group up. Ario right in the center. There's the Winter's Curse. The Splinter Blast comes through. It's off the creeps. Keeps it next to Palos. Gets the kill on the Wisp. It's perfect work from Bombi. The stolen lasso from the Rubik. I thought it was going to be enough to maybe get the damage out. They have the snowball to follow up on the Windrunner, but just not enough. As they finish off Bob, they take out Zanki, and then they take out 
this Rubik and they get the full team wipe. That brings them right back into the game. They were struggling. They were 4k behind. Now they are only 1k behind and yeah, they're getting their core items up. Trying to dive the Winter Wyvern here. Bombie's a little bit scary. Okay, guys. <laughs> Do you really want to dive him? Or is he going to dive you? Ooh. The Weaver is struggling though. Weaver is quite poor. Yeah. This could be something that helps him out though. They have the Shackle, the look for the damage. Allo's in some trouble. Focus fire on him. It's Hung who gets the kill. Weaver there to help magnetize. Oh, the Firefly. Oh, Rubik. Firefly's not going to help you get out of that one though. Hustle getting the second kill in that bottom lane. Meanwhile, Hunter Wyvern. Yeah, Radiant's got him. The night time for under that. attack. Or rather, or rather the dark extension. Really is. Top it is, is right? Yeah. When he starts flying, like you run. I think I saw from himself is, is under a attack. very scary Dyer's hero. I mean, if you experienced that in the wild, and that actually existed, one of the scary ones. If he gets a shot, he would already eat you. Because that's actually what a shot does. Fallen. You just get eaten. Radiant structures are fortified. Same. Dyer's I don't want to get eaten like that. I don't want to get eaten at all. <laughs> Not like that only, but... <laughs> The saying, that is the most uh, brutal way. That's one of the ways you don't want to go, is getting eaten by a Night Stalker. Brood, Radiant definitely one of those ones scanning. you don't want to get eaten by. Dyer's yep. top tower has fallen. So, use for, for the Void Spirit, then going into the Ags. We'll have that silence once he gets that Ags. Yep. One of the things that I think that is a bit of a problem for 496 is the cold embracing it feels like it's setting up an Aether Remnant every time. Sabotage? Mm. Yeah, but at the same time, it... No one ties to damage off of the Tusk is all physical, Night Stalker is pretty much all physical. Mm -hmm. When Ayo has Agonims, you have to Dyer's be really careful though because those spirits, they attack. will hurt. And if you hold and brace someone of your teammates and he's out of position, that's going to be very painful. Did he finish his axe already? I think he did. About to come out of the courier. And now they have this axe timing on this Ayo. Doesn't Girl, have the spirit damage yet. Still yes. quite a while off. <laughs> but... Yeah, now it's uh, go time for Radiant, I think. But they're getting picked apart right now. They should be able to fight into them until, what, the BKB comes out for the Windrunner as well as the Weaver? Yeah, they definitely need to use the timing where, you know, the Weaver is pretty weak. The Bad Rider doesn't have a weak bit. They're going for three BKB bits. The pick up here. Oh, great point break in the lasso. I always enjoy seeing that combination. Snowball to extend his life. Is it extending the inevitable? Looks to be the case. Shackle land, power shot, finishing blow. But meanwhile, the Wyvern and Bombi throws the Winter's Curse defensively. They're going to rotate over the Windrunner into the mid tier two. See if that ends up being enough because they might turn this around. Shackle doesn't connect. Focus fire. Night Stalker coming in and Hung has had enough. There was a huge commitment. He's just like, the Shackle ult. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what he thought he would catch there. Bad Rider, a little bit of trouble here. Silence, crippling fear, and now it's through the wind run. They've got to tell son of Hung. They're trying to take this fight. Bob's getting really low. Astro step away. Not sure it's heavy enough. They've got the time lapse used by this Weaver. Ayo saved him again. Shards on a Bombie. Snowball, cold embrace once again. Shadow oh. the Night Stalker on the back once again. Power shot, not sure. Oh, oh, he's down. And the Night Stalker on the back. Oh, he's going to go take out four of the oil. He magnetized five, he slowed five, he silenced five. Wow! What is <laughs> happening? Like the supports are popping off, man. Yeah, that was perfect. But it all Strong. started off with a shackle, which was an amazing shackle. To shackle a Night Stalker when he's flying is brutal. But, wow. Oh, and then a disconnect by Vice. This feels bad. This is moral damage right there. Mental damage, you know. You get wiped and then you disconnect. Oof. Let's watch it again. Let's watch the handy workout. Go with the shekel. Pay attention to the Earth Spirit, everybody. This is where it's going to get brutal for Vice, who have, up to this point played really well. And they thought, I think they just didn't really keep it together. They looked for red. Then they saw Hung. They had the telekinesis. They switched their targets a couple times. They're a little bit back and forth. Where are we fighting? Where are we going? They're trying to heal up Bob. They're going to go through here. Shards. Comes That's the a big commitment from the Tusk and then the Shackle. They'll try and help. And immediately Earth, Earth Spirit, Spirit, he's Look on the case. Here it comes all five of them just right together. <laughs> Geomagnetic grip on the everybody into this magnetized flame break. I think hit all five too. They just yeah. kill off all these heroes on Vice. And that is the combo from 496. Wow.
that is perfectly put together. It is rare that you see a five-man magnetize like that yeah. with no like Magnus help or any other help. That was everybody was positioned. I'm gonna throw that magnetize and the geomagnetic grip. I don't know when the last time, if at all, I've ever seen a five-man geomagnetic yeah. grip. Not only that, also the Q, of course, is boulder smash slowed. All five heroes did massive amounts of damage. Yeah. He just rolled into five heroes. They were all so clumped up. Power shot through uh, the what's it called the flame break as well. Flame break, yeah, and just the, about the blast. Everybody. What's it called? The splitter blast. Yeah, splittering blast. Whatever. So much AOE damage. Brutal. Take a look at Hustle's stats. 12 assists, 3 kills. He's had 6 stats up to this point, but when you're mostly leading the charge, yep. your bat rider's struggling to get a blink dagger, you're the one who has to roll in and initiate, you're going to die a couple times. Yep. And then you make plays like this, doesn't matter how many it's times all you worth die. It. Yep. Yep. G ready to go. Everybody back to the side of Vice, who were in the driver's seat. They looked really good. Um, it's a bad fight. That's... Exactly. Yeah, it's a back-to-back. -back. Um, they were ahead 4K. That, oh, look at the experience. Now they're behind 4K. Experience massively in favor of 496. And when they get the three BKBs up, it slides out for Radiant. They have no damage. Tower is under yeah, attack. and this is going to be where 496 put in and initiate the game plan. Aggression. Yeah. Bleeding Bleeding on, on the Wyvern, by the way. Yeah, get that position. He, he's for the winter rich. Skirts. He's rich. Yeah. How did he's he get a, that? He's ahead of the Earth Spirit by 100 gold. Yeah. And he's almost where the Void Spirit is. That's pretty interesting, too. Uh, I'm the shocked void at struggling. where the Void Spirit's just continuing to struggle. That's like... Is always yeah, I thought he was having a much better game. Uh, yeah, what was having a rough series, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, the first game was certainly rough, and now the second one. There's still time. He can get to that axe, and things could turn around. I'm not saying this game is over by any means for Vice, but that is a massive turnaround for 496. Mm -hmm. That was played on perfect execution, especially yep. by Hustle. Oh, he has a vessel up as well. Yeah, I mean, they just kind of want to sit back and counterplay all the aggression of Radiant right now because they want to farm on the three BKBs. Once they have the three Radiant's BKBs, it's going to be all out of aggression time. Attack. Probably Roshan. They just Radiant's want to fight, uh, force the Roshan fight. But until then, you just want to split push the map and, you know, minimize the damage they can deal around the map. Yeah, we saw that uh, Rubik took the uh, power shot. That's always a strong one to throw back. Full duration power yeah. shot. It feels like one of the best skills that he can get this in this damage. game. Um, especially, you know, anything you get from Earth Spirit, you're not really Russia. utilizing the right ways if you're a Rubik. Power Dyer's Shot feels like the one. You said Chikuchi is, is really good because then you give me a nuisance and you find good positioning. And then attack. like Lasso. Yes. And nice Shackle Shot as well. Yeah. Best as well. Windranger has a whole array of good spells to steal. Yeah, for sure. It feels like a high Rubik game. Without Without vision, though. Yeah, it's tough. They've got the silence out of the Weaver. Thank you thinking about jumping in, but Dad Lee now going after Anryu. The shards don't block him out. They're going to have a roll here from Hustle. Yeah, it's a swarm hit. Anryu in trouble. The shoot shot the boulder smash. You might have a not needed. They get the kill there onto Anryu. They take out Zanki. It's hung with another kill. And here's the aggression that we were talking about. 496 immediately jumping into the deep end and looking to put the pressure on device. Flame break into the lasso. He's hit that combo a couple times. It's not going to get the kill just yet, but you're having heroes rotate. They're ready to go on to Bob. They'll use their dissimilar, go back to the high ground, right into the firefly. He ends up dead, and they've got the chase to get the kill. They look for more, they fight for it. And they take out four, looking for a fifth, and there it is. The roll with the magnetite. They've got the spear of the It's not going to be enough damage to get the kill. They've got the snowball to take out this first spirit, but they're still looking to go in deep. They'll find themselves palace, but they don't have the damage. The Weaver not committing up at the tier 2 tower. The power shot comes in. Anryu, a lot of these heroes on the side of Vice running away with barely any health. Yeah, that was a sick play by the Earth Spirit, but you know, sometimes Radiant's when you have this kind of plays, it's like uh, it baits you into a bad situation. You're like, oh, I can't do that thing. And then you like start diving him, you know, which of course in the end costs him and his teammates his life. But yeah, it was a sick play nonetheless. Oh, he stole the Kushi. Yeah, he's trying to stick up with him. He ducked him too. But again, make one of those good plays. It kind of puts you in a bad position where now you're dead. It's man. You hate to see oh, it. The Daffy tip after that. I mean, he wants to. You know, he was feeling himself on Ruby. I got this show. 
He just like, drives in. on Rubik. You steal a spell, you land on, you got the dust and all of a sudden you're like, Rubik is he's a pretty strong support. You want to just go in there and yeah. make something happen. Make a play. Because there's realize? so many good Rubik players, it feels like you're always living into, you know, the legend that is all these like FYs and everybody. Like YGH, all these players, yeah. And then you realize, ah, I just have 900 health. I'm not actually that tanky. <laughs> Now they're going to Roshan. They have Beetles, they have Focus Fire. Just Curse. Yeah. And there's no Nighttime on Radiant. So this is, this is a tough uh, fight to take for, for Radiant. Yeah, Dark Ascension on cooldown. Yep. Going for this Roshan. Also looking to maybe defend it and go for a fight. Yeah. 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 They've got the lasso. Now the Snowball comes in. Roche sitting very low. The power shot. They don't get the kill on two points. Rokers yet. They just kick up by Hung. Now they'll look to finish off the rest. They take up Bombi. The Witcher's Curse is going to keep out in place. The Simway onto the high ground. And they get Bob away. A couple more shots might be enough. The rolling boulder in. Bob ends up dead. It's a one for one so far. But here comes the rest of 496. Flame Break pushes the back. They've got the Soma going through onto the bat right with Power Shot hitting out of Palace. They look okay. over as yep. they relocate out. They're out of the sight of 496 for now. But for eventually, let's run. see them come back. Run, 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 run. Marathon, marathon. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely just want to disengage here. It's way too scary with the Ayo just coming back in full health. Yeah. Who also managed to farm up a BKB. He's actually leading the net worth still by quite a bit, even though they have been under so much pressure. Yeah, the fact that they're down 8,000 net worth and still you've got a Wisp top of the net worth. There are different scenarios where you've got heroes that can definitely hold the game when they're top of the net worth and the rest of the team's really not got a lot of farm, but I don't know if Wisp feels like that kind of hero that can carry four other Radiant heroes on his back to victory. I mean, we spoke about it, right? If you don't have at least one partner that you can actually empower and make use of, Io feels kind of meh in, in the late game, the late mid game as well. So we, we'll see. Like, Night Circle will have to step up. Oh, they're, they're smoking from behind here. Radiant's bottom tower is under from attack. attack. On Ryu he has BKB. Charge. Dyer's and Aegis. top tower That's is not under attack. Top fight. Yeah. But they might just want to... Oh, he's going for the tower. Shackle thrown out. It's not going to connect, though. They're still going to go for this. They've got the Rubik coming around. They have the Telekinesis. They'll have On Ryu jump forward, but he's going to the back lines. He's looking for the Winter Wyvern. He wants to take the Winter's Curse as well as the Coda Brace. Now the Power Shot comes in as well as the Jack on the Night Stalker. They have the control. On Ryu in trouble. There's the Cold Embrace and Night Stalker. He's trying to bite off more than he can chew, especially in the nighttime with the bigger mouth. There's no Magnetized Drew Magnetic Grip. The roll once again. They've got the Spirit Vessel. Telekinesis coming through from Samuel. Hustle Radiant's up, shackled, and that's the stolen shackle from Rubik. He's starting to feel himself. There's the snowball, and one more right click from Palos. But the power oh, shot, oh, the damage not quite there. He'll use the walrus punch to slow down this back rider, but the shackle connects. The damage is there, and eventually he will fall. But they got a shoot on the back rider as well as the wheel rider. They get the kill on this toss. They'll take out the Rubik. Yeah, they try to re-engage. Again, the shackle hits the wind runner as well as the bat rider. And it's like, oh, this is our moment to jump in. It's almost like every time they land something that feels like that turnaround, they commit so heavily to it and it's not working out. Yeah, I mean, it was a fantastic play by Bombi once again. A fantastic curse with the blink initiation. I mean, we sat there outplaying 496, but now the table's turned again. 496 Heavily. is outplaying them in every team fight pretty much. And it's all getting set up, honestly, by, by Hustler. Even though he's dying, you know, he's setting up good fights for his team. So those are not bad deaths at all. Yeah. If your death garners kills in result, he's fine. Especially for support. Yeah. Because, like, there's not much to give away. Yeah, if it's a different story when it's like, the Weaver dies and you get two kills and, well, yeah. if it's just the, uh, the Earth Spirit and then you can turn that around, that's fine. Definitely. There, there are moments still, like, I understand that Vice is down 12k, but there are still moments where it's like a flash in the pan. They look really good, things get hot for them real quick, and it falls apart really fast. Like, that shackle from the Rubik was onto the Windrunner, it connected with the Batrider, it kept that fight, I think, winnable, but at the end of the day, it doesn't go their way, and it feels like Good. that's just circumstance of the fact that Night Stalker and Void Spirit don't have really that much farm compared to the Wisp. Yeah, but I think the biggest problem right now is just that they're quite disconnected. You saw the Night Stalker was Radiant's diving the Wyvern top alone. Top yeah, nobody can help him. They, 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 they drip in one by one, you know? They're not five there. 
Like if you want to match the aggression of 4 6 we saw the last game, you need Radiant's to bring all the numbers, which is exactly what I did in the early game, and they smashed 4 9 6 aggression, you know? Yeah. So that's what you have to do, even now, if you're behind. That's the only way to combat this aggression. And you can't be sprinkling in one by one, it has to be a good commitment. Your communication has to be there. There's the crippling fear, and again, the Night Stalker is really deep going to the back lines, but he's not going to land as the Winter Wyvern blinks away. I think he's going to forward, trying to make an aggressive play, but they've got the Winter's Curve that's on a pal. The Night Stalker is in a lot of trouble. Bottom with the Cloder Brace, he's going to survive for a little bit. They've got the silence on the Night Stalker as they take out Palos, they'll take out the Rubik, they've got themselves three to zero instead. That Tusk had fallen earlier. Andre drops, and that is nobody gone on the side of 496. Again, aggression hurting Vice. The play, the idea is there, Radiant's the execution is in. If they just tweak Radiant's it a little bit, you could see those fights turning and, and maybe being in their favor. Structures are fortified. I would say a lot tougher at this point when you're down this much, but Definitely. earlier on, that's where the communication kind of melted down, and if they had succeeded with that execution earlier, mm -hmm. it could have been a whole that different story. Fight. But even this fight, Radiant's you know, uh, top tower they're is taking under this attack. fight, but Void Spirit is not even part of it. He's farming mid lane. If he yeah. was there, the Winter Wyvern is dead, Radiant's the curse on the IO won't happen, and maybe it's a completely different fight, you know? Just bring all your numbers. Tusk is spotted out, Snowball, Walrus, Bond, Ryan gets in time to leave, the roll is in, once again, the charge don't matter. They've also got the lasso on the Rubik, this should be another kill, it will be crippling fear, the jump forward, one by one by one, they are trickling into this fight, and each time they're losing their life. Radiance yeah. top I mean, at this is point, attack. probably it's... A lot of mental damage caused already. I think it's a, it could be a little bit of frustration too. We've yeah. seen them disconnect three or four times. Radiance that middle tower really, is under attack. I know sometimes if I disconnect from a game, Radiance it pulls me out mentally sometimes. I mean, especially after the team fight middle, where like three of them disconnected after yeah. the team wipe, like this sets a lot of people on Radiance edge. Radiance you know? middle tower. Like you already lost this fight, and then you have like internet problems too, or whatever it was. It's just. Your yeah. mind is not fully focused, it's worrying about Does another thing, which is, am I going to lag, is this a problem? You're not able to just keep everything tunneled into the game. That's yeah. a that's a, a, another feat that you have to kind of, another obstacle you have to get over. Yeah, I, it, it's hard. It's really hard. Like, like, honestly, half of Dota, I'm sure at this point we all know it's mental. Oh, good Shackle on 2 again. Yeah, Shackle on the Night Stalker as well has this whip. Mayo's coming on the BK, B Palace trying to run, but the damage is there. They've got the kill from Daffy B. Over to the Night Stalker again on the, on the run, but can't make it out. And once upon a time was a moment where he could fly over the trees and make the escape. Not this time. And even just place like relocating in to just hit the tier one tower gets punished so severely. Like yeah. they're in the head 100%. The shackle shot amazing on the, both the IO and the Night Stalker once more. And it just like the rotation seems so seamless, you know? Yeah. Like everything they do just works out. It's an extension from that first game. Yeah. We talked about their execution, we talked about their movements. It felt like they had heroes that naturally have global presence, but in the end it's 496 who have just Radiance top used their movements and used their communication to execute so well. And it really has been uh yeah. Yeah. He's got the last though. They'll get the kill on the bomb. Another big on for 496. Wow. Meanwhile, crippling fear. They're just trying to chase. Seems like maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, anger coming their way. Or, uh, you know, just trying to make up for all this lost ground. And it's not looking right. On to you. He dies. And then they go after Zanky. Finishing off the top. Two zeros in again. And this is knocking right on the bottom tier three. The look over the Rubik. The play break pushes him back. They've got the jackal. doesn't connect anywhere, however. And A kill onto this Rubik. He'll buy back immediately. The Winter's Curse is placed on him, keeping him in place. And now Dire, they start to retreat. The buyback starting to trickle through. They've got the Void Spirit up in about five seconds. Cold Embrace staying alive. Power Shot coming in onto the Tusk. This is Vice trying to throw everything in the kitchen Radiant's sink. Bottom tower but is under attack. they've just got a, a tiny home. Yeah. I mean, it's not... I right. have bunching for yeah. you. This real key could be punished again. Trying to at least. Potentially. One guy's gonna die. Yeah, at least the Tusk is gone. Exactly, getting taken out. I'm a big fan of the itemization as well on Dyer's side. First time we've seen Fnatic in the IO. They did not build Vessel, they did not build Skadi, they mm -hmm. did not build Shivas. This game they have Skadi as well as Vessel, which just makes IO so much weaker. Like the healing on yourself and your teammates is just cut like, what, by half. 
up even more. Shackle on the money again. And then look for Bob once more. Bob, he's killed by Anryu. They had heroes down there. They left the Winter Wyvern by himself. Uh, Radiant Unable to help out, but Windrunner now coming over. Focus fire throws the shackle. This is a little aggressive by himself. We'll see if it ends up paying off. Get the kill onto the Rubik, and it is certainly paying off for now. Crippled here right on top of the Earth's Barrier. The silence is there. The damage, too. They get that kill. He'll finish off the pipe, but he's dead for 67 seconds, though. Buyback. Palace pops the DKB. Turns around, going for Hung. And, well, Anryu, he's getting burned alive by this Bat Rider. Body block, and will burn out. Red gets the kill. They look over at Palace. The Centaur stuns him up, but he's got a DKB. He has the lasso ready to go. He'll hold him in place. They'll keep him right next to the Bat Rider, and finally joining them is Dat BB. They'll go after Palace, who's trying to TP out. The damage comes in just in time, and Whisk is gone again. Yeah, yeah very close. Getting out of there, by the way. Scotty just, you know, uh, applying that heal reduction, so he can't make it out of time. Itemizing perfectly. Yep, very good itemization. Very good team play, honestly. Four nine six team play is just amazing. Like, like you just see it all the time. They, they just bring enough people yeah. to every location just so they can make it work. And then at the same time, they go in another spot. And then they go in another lane again. They go in another lane again. It's just so hard to keep up if you're the enemy team. And this for that major spot, yep. and here we are. I mean, Vice, or maybe a curse here, just on the time. Vice is not considered one of the best teams in this upper division, of course, but it's still a state. Radiant's bottom this tower is under attack. This is how you want to dismantle teams, you know, that are considered quote unquote weaker, if you want to be a contender for that major spot. And they're showing it here, they're relentless. Kuchi, Dappy B, Hoja Shikuchi way himself. Yeah, on the door. Winter's curse locks up the void spirit as well as the night stalker. They are both in trouble with the shackle on them again. Tusk wins this fight, but it's just a dime. They get the kill bomb on Ryu and Senki taking out all three though. Buy back on the night stalker. But you're fighting three into five. Probably not the best scenario. As the BKB's been popped by the Batrider, the Crypto Crew is about to run out. And again, the Dire can just reinitiate. Flame Break Lasso comes through on a palace. He's tethered up, but it's not going to be for long. Palace pops the BKB. The damage coming through from home. And they will take out the palace. The Shackle doesn't connect, but it's still a full team wipe for the side of 496. Vice. Radiance Are they going to call? Is it time? I think, uh, you know, I've been in this situation many, many times. I think the longer you stay in this kind of game, of course, it's the last game, you know, if you lose this series, it's over, but this is causing a lot of damage mentally, you know? <laughs> like, nobody Radiant's likes this, obviously. And it's not something you should put Radiant's yourself through. Uh, this is a pretty unwinnable spot at this point, so. But they want to play it out, you know, can't blame them for it. Last chance they have in the series. Might make it work, you know. Crazier things that happen. Radiance yeah, let's put it that way. Maybe if they, you know, want to play around, dive the fountain or whatever. But this is what has to happen at this point, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. they're not losing if they play straight. Gotta go for broke, telekinesis. And the fountain, there we are. But Radiance go set the purchase right away. <laughs> this top experience coming in. And then he's just gonna roll, he's got the magnetize. I mean, he tried to kill me by throwing me in your well. He's gonna kill by a power shot. Lasso on the board straight. Look at the control. We'll take him out once again. Bob falling. Yep. Once more. This is very much like my top game yesterday. Here, silence coming out. They've got the spirit vessel on the night. Star. Killed off. Winter's curse on a palace as well as the top. They're basically stepping on the door saying, that's what they wanted. And they, they got it. They're even tipping him. The enemy team is tipping him too. Maybe his middle tower is under attack. He's gonna make him work for it. They, they do not like to give up. I mean, it's commendable. Yeah. But, you know? Like, on 23 kills, 2 deaths, 28 assists. If my math is correct, that is 50. Oh, 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 o
participation in a game where you've got Radiance almost 60. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Yeah. Uh, we Radiance said uh, 40k Middle Tower last is under game attack. was a lot of gold difference. Now it's close to 50. Get the other tier 4. Radiance Middle Tower Now it's fallen. time to take the throne. 3v5. Do we see anything left from Vice? Potentially. Zim, but the engine not going to live long enough for this to matter. They do have to take a at the end of the day, but that is uh, that is it for Vice. Two zero yeah. for four nine six. That looked really smooth. I was really impressed.